In this tutorial, I'm gonna show one of two in mold details for bottle one. It's this concave uh, rib area right in the center. Um, so I'm gonna build that into the bottle that we built last time. So please take over, look at my layers. So I wanna talk about this. This is really good practice to start to uh, separate all the different functions. As you can see, I'm starting off with our loft bottle, which we did last time. And then I'm going to start to do these in mold details. So I'm going to do them on a separate layer. And so I have all the history and all the ghosted objects. If we start building all of this in one layer, it can get very overwhelming and confusing to have all the parts together. So as we build and we're successful for different components, we bring that forward and then keep adding to it. So we have this history at all times. So I'm going to go get the bottle that we built from last time. So I'm going to just illuminate that first layer. So this is the surface bottle that we lofted last time. So I'm gonna select that. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna move a copy of this to this next layer so I can work with it. So the way to do that is to go to your move tool and select this on move one copy. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna click very quickly. So what I did was I moved one of those exactly in the same place. I do not wanna move that. If you click a little too slow, you might accidentally move it a little bit, and then all of a sudden things are going to be off center. But I'm even going to check that just to double sh make sure that I had done that correctly. So I moved one, and now I want to take, I moved a copy. So I'm going to take that and move it to the next layer, which is this blue icon under the uh, attributes. It's at the end. I'm going to make sure I have my next layer, layer two, the concave rib. I have that selected with the red dot. So if I click, that copy will go to that layer. And I'm gonna deselect the first layer that I took that from. So now I know it's here. So let's go to the front view. I'm gonna draw a, a center line. I'm gonna extend it up above so I can see it. Now I'm just gonna double check, like I had mentioned, I put that right on the center of the object. And that should be right in the middle of our space, and it is. So what I want to do is I'm going to build this in mold detail, and you can see how I started to do that on this image on the left. I'm going to build it just on one half of this part. So if I build that and keep that nice and clean, all I have to do is mirror that over to the other side. Then I know I have perfect symmetry, and I'm hanging on to my center line. So these kinds of details are really good practice. I could loft that all one piece. And I did try that and it was a little crooked. It was kind of going all over the place. So I'm gonna split this to do that. So we're gonna cut this in half. So we're going to uh, get our trim split tool over here, which we've used before. And it's gonna be with line, which is way over on the right. So I'm going to select the object. I can select it anywhere I want, but I wanna keep this part on the right-hand side. So if I select that and trim that, it takes away the other half. So now I just have that front half of that bottle shape. And this is what I'm going to work on. So I'm going to bring up some lines that I had constructed. I'll explain how they worked. Instead of spending the time during this tutorial to show these, these are pretty straightforward. These are just curved lines. I did them on center. So I did the top one first, which is just a nice curve. So I did the curve and then I snapped it to the middle. And this is up to you, it's subjective. I put this in position in these three locations where I thought this curve would go. So I did the top one. And then I did this bottom one where I bent it and flexed it by independently scaling it to make it have a little more dynamics. It's a little closer to give the middle, a little for, further apart on the side. And then I copied and moved a third one sort of in the center of those two. But I'm gonna be moving that one around. So this is subjective. This is just an aesthetic decision to set up all these curves. So what we wanna do is I want to extrude that middle curve. Where's my extrude? Hmm. 
Hmm. Keep losing my tools. Here we go. Extrusion uh, under the derive tool. So I'm going to extrude that forward. I have it at about an inch. I think that should do it. And I'll show you what I'm doing. So now I have that line extruded forward, protruding into the front of that bottle shape. What I want to do is I want to find the intersection of those two lines. So we have uh, in the derived area, we have the called line of intersection. It's under modify. It's in the same area that the trim split was located. So if I click on that and I click on any two surfaces, they will be ghosted, but I'll end up with the intersection of those two parts. So now I want to unghost this quadrant of the bottle, this front quadrant. And I'm going to trim that with these other two lines. So I'm separating that area where our curve is going to be. So again, we'll use the trim split tool. I select the bottom one and I click this bottom line and it cuts that away. So now I have that bottom part. Let's unghost the entire piece. Now the entire part is back and I'm going to trim just the top section. So now I'm going to grab, uh, select this part because I want that part and trim the top with this line. So now I have cut those surfaces away. Now I need to make this blended curve in between. So how we do that is we adjust and modify this little line that we have in the middle. So this is going to be independently scaling this in several different directions. Um, where's my eye scale? Here we go. Uh, independent scale. This edge on the back, uh, let's go to self. I'm going to start there. So I'm going to snap on that point. And I'm just going to come forward straight like this. And I'm going to stay perpendicular to our grid. And I'm going to move the front of that segment in. Now, this is also subjective. This is an aesthetic decision. I'm going to move that in a little bit to try to create that curve that I have. I'm going to move that. What am I going to do? I'll move that down a little. Same thing, independent scale. But I'm going to select here and come up, straight up, and then independently scale that down. Sure, I don't have to go too far. It might be about like this. So I'm going to try that. We can try this and undo. I'm going to go to the front. I also want this to go inside here. So I want this curve to be a negative curve. So I'm going to independently scale from this direction. I'm selecting the front of this. I'm going to come straight out. I'm going to move the tip of that point in. Not sure how much. We'll try it. We can always modify it later. So let's say I want to try that. Now that's sitting pretty low to this bottom edge. I kind of want it closer to the middle. So we can independently scale in the other direction. So I'm going to select here and I'm going to come straight down and I'm going to push this up. And I'm not sure exactly where it'll go. Somewhere, I'm just envisioning what that curve might look like if I string these three lines together. So let's try about like that. So now what I can do is these segments, this top segment and the bottom segment, segment are part of those surfaces. They're not separate objects. The line I have in the middle is a separate object, but I don't have to worry about that. What I can do is I can go to select lines with my pick tool, and I'm going to select this edge. I'm going to hold a shift key down, so I can multiple selections. I'm going to select all three of those. And I'm going to go to my uh, tangent loft under derivative three, which is where the round tool was. I'm going to select that. 
and it is going in you don't need caps it's going to create a blended surface by connecting those three together so it looks pretty good i mean those curves could be modified i can go back and forth i'm not going to do that right now but they look pretty good that should uh, be very successful so that's a nice beautiful negative curve shape that we have in there so what we can do and what i will do is i'm going to take now I have three surfaces. If I go to the view front, I can take this. I'm going to mirror one copy. I am going to select all of these. I'm going to stitch. This is down in the modify tool by union. Remember union and difference, we use those when we did solids. That was almost like, if you think about union and difference, if you put those together, it's like you're building with blocks and you're gluing them together. So you're, you're using the union tool. When you get involved with surfaces, it is sort of like, more like sheets of paper or fabric. So they use the term stitch. So when you have these surfaces and you wanna hold them together, you stitch them and it becomes one surface. So I'm gonna use this stitch tool And I'm going to select that. If I go back to my pick tool, there's a, 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 we can evaluate these objects. There's inspector, which is right at the bottom there. If I click on that, oops, I don't have it selected. To select the object. So I see that's all one surface. If I go to inspector, it has uh, different things. So information tells me it's a plain object, it's smooth. And see type is critical. It's a surface, it's not a solid and it's saying a surface. If I didn't stitch that correctly, it would say surfaces. That means it would be poorly stitched. So now I know that's nicely stitched together. Eventually we're gonna mirror this around to the front to the back after we finish the other details. I just wanna show you what's gonna happen with these edges in the future. And it's kind of a test we will have here. I'm gonna select these and Go to my radius tool. Um, probably gonna do these at about an eighth inch. Let's see if that goes. So that's what's gonna happen in the next phase. Now I can radius those. So I have that nice curve going into my shape. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. And the next tutorial will do the, uh, the other in mold detail that is in this bottle.